Hi guys, so I'm getting a lot of a lot of uh, questions about hair in Daz and I'm making this video just to show you the different kinds of hair and the different options you have for hair. Um, I got a few new hairs, Daz was having a sale, so I got a couple different types of hair so that you can um, take a look. Hair is also something you're allowed to be creative with within Daz. Um, with the whole parameters and uh, morph dialing, a lot of these things are built in with you uh, being able to manipulate it in order to get, you know, a desired look. So let's look at this 2021 hair Genesis 8 female. I guess that's that's a name. <laughs> Usually they come with cute names. I guess this is 2021 hair. So this is that new, new hair. Your hair comes with preset shaping that you, uh, you should be familiar with. You can highlight your hair and then in your, um, you can access it by the smart content menu under shaping and you have all of these different selections. Now these are pre-selected hair shapes, hair morphs, I should say. Um, sometimes you can use them together but you should just zero it back if something's not working just go back to your original um, original configuration and start all over again but also I want to show you in the parameters under when you have the hair selected uh, in your parameters for your hair you are able to manipulate the actual hair length you can manipulate the shape and the placement of the hair through your morph dials so I'm just going to go through that and uh, I like to look at the back on the long hairs. I like to see how the back kind of, uh, sometimes it conforms too much to the shape of the head. I like it to actually lay out, but this is the magic of Daz is that you're able to create some type of, uh, you know, the particular illusion that you want. So let's go ahead and look at some of these dials and I'm going to go ahead and create my own dials based off this one, um, hair selection that I have. So underneath the hair, this particular hair, you have so many different layers. So if you can see, I'm going to highlight um, the section of the hair. It has its own morph. So you see that little section there? It's like right bottom, uh, left side, twist. There are so many different layers and sections of, the, of this hair, because it's the new 2021 hair, uh, <laughs> that you're able to manipulate it. So I can actually take one section and grow it all the way down by using the scale or using the slider. I could bring it in, I could twist it, I could pull it out. So now I've made this hair, this piece of the hair go all the way down uh, to her forearm or actually her bicep. Almost could reach the forearm, but not really. But I'm sure there are ways to manipulate the hair even further than what I'm showing you here. Here's the thing be creative that's what we're you know that's what we're here for so take some of these dials create your own windblown hair by using these dials or you create can create a new hairstyle with her hair more voluminous you can create the hair where it's shorter you can create the hair where it has more bends and more curls or, or twists as you can say. So this is your opportunity with a hair like this to go ahead and be creative. And I'm just going to build it out and see how long I can get it in the back. Um, usually I buy hair that's shoulder length because I work with clothing in uh, Clo3D in uh, <clears throat> Clo3D, Marvelous Designer. I don't really use Marvelous Designer, but uh, Browseware. I, I like to export the model with the hair um, just in case I want to actually preview it or render it within the program. The hair, short hair doesn't interfere with the clothing at all. So I usually have short hair on my models. Uh, if I do use a long hair model, I put the hair on pretty much after I render the clothing. And you probably will only see that in a Daz uh, 3D render. So here we go. I made her have a sweep back over one shoulder and 
I made her hair really long in the back. So you can see as I'm grabbing sections of the hair, I'm manipulating them um, just to configure the way that I want it. So this is that 2021 hair, and uh, that was kind of fun to do that. Now I'm just playing with the parameters for her face. And sometimes you might not know where something is when there's so many sections of the hair. All you need to do is just go ahead and click on it to get the name of that particular section, and then you can go back and find the dial in under your parameters. So um, have fun with this type of hair that has so many sections. Not every hair is like that, <laughs> and not every hair is, uh, like you can see, I just highlighted the section so I can figure out, well, what is it? Go back to your parameters, or you can use your scaling um, you can use X and Y, Z, whichever way you want to do it. So you have so many different options with the hair when it's uh, sectioned out like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it really long in the back and even it out. And then I will call it a day with this hair. But here's the fun thing. I mean, you can be creative. Like sometimes you buy these assets in, in Daz and uh, you can only use it for a couple of looks or um, you're not able to like really shape it and manipulating it. So this is a good hair for manipulation and I've got my long hairstyle. And that's that. And we're gonna get into some of the other hairs and how to use these parameters and what they can actually help you with. So thank you, Genesis 8. You know, and with creativity, sometimes you're just never satisfied until you are. <laughs> so I had fun playing with this one. And then I remembered I was doing a tutorial and I was like, okay, I think that's enough for the tutorial. <laughs> Okay, so let's look at another hair. Um, you can pretty much see from my hair library that I have uh, not so many hairs, but I like to manipulate them and recolor them and use them. So this hair is the Ion hair. I hope I'm saying that right. So this is a big woolly hair, but when you bring it in, oh my gosh, where is the hair in the NVIDIA iRay preview? It is not there. But when you render it out, and I'll render a section, you can render it out and the hair is there. But what these hairs, um, the property that allows it not to show in the NVIDIA iRay preview is called tessellation. Now the tessellation is at zero. But in your texture shaded view, you can see the hair just fine. When you're ready to render, it will render out, but it saves memory in your viewpoint. That is why you cannot see the hair. So this is especially designed hair for people to be able to work without getting a crash or work without using up too many of your computer's um, RAM basically <laughs> it's not even about the graphics card it's about how much work your computer is doing just to see this hair so um what i've noticed about this hair though for some reason and i have to maybe reload it i was trying to edit the uh the color of the hair and it wasn't working for me so i'm going to show you a neat way to go ahead and edit um edit the hair customize edit not just the edit that you already have preloaded for some reason it's not loading and it might be the view that I have it in I'm not sure what it is so it's I'll figure that out and I will let you guys know in an update at some point why maybe you'll see it flash across the screen and once I figure that out I'll load it up 
uh, once this video makes it to YouTube, I probably will have figured it out and I will put a note. So here again, under parameters, um, actually under surfaces for your hair, I'm going to go to surfaces and we're going to click on the hair. And now you can see that the hair actually has basic color, uh, I want to say color swatches or color JPEGs that you can manipulate. So it, at this point, I want to go ahead and I want to click on this and I want to edit. Let's say I want to get a darker brown. I want to edit this um uh, this image within DAS. I can actually edit the image within DAS. I tried everything. I was like, maybe if I just drag and drop. But, um, yeah, something's up with that. So let's go ahead. I think I discovered that I can go ahead and edit that. The JPEG that is attached to the hair in the hair materials. And then that will change the whole color of the hair. So you could also do that. This also works, this particular Ion hair works in the uh, Octane Octane and I-Ray. So it is an Octane editable hair, so you can work the materials in within Octane uh, for DAS, DAS 3D. And, um, you know, there's some instructions here for that. And it's, it's a good thing to uh, be able to use the hair in both. So uh, you don't have to worry about changing the materials too much. So this is also Octane and I-Ray hair. But since I'm having trouble, I'm going to go ahead and try to edit. Now, I thought this was the image editor that it was going to allow me to change the color. But I don't have too much experience with this. So I might have to do a separate video on just how to use this. But you can go ahead and change parameters. But I think this part is not editable. So I'm going to go ahead into another section. That's the same section. I just went through there. But in the next section under layered image editor so now all I did was make this a little bit darker because I see that this is the light part of the hair now keep keep in mind in the viewport it's not going to change but it will change in the render so I'm going to go ahead and make this a bit darker because the uh, the actual hair in the viewport has its own color. So that color may never go away, just in case you're wondering what happened with this hair, why, why didn't it change color. When I do my render snippet, snippet or render preview, it did change it to a darker color. So it did work as expected just know that this hair is not going to come into play until you change the tessellation. Um, I've worked with the tessellation at five and I will show you that on a later hair. And uh, that's it for this hair. So for the next hair, let's take another look at some of these hair issues. Um, yeah, let's try this hair. So now this is a deforce hair, which you will see me using, um, in animation so I'm gonna go ahead this hair actually will move and shake with um, with my animation in Daz so I'm gonna go ahead and um, just show you this hair real quick and then I will do a separate part about how it um, <clears throat> how you apply deforce and use a deforce now here's the thing with these hair sometimes in the viewport the colors don't exactly match. So always just take a little peek uh, with your render, uh, yeah, with the selection key in your render uh, render view so you can just see what the render is gonna look like. And this looks like it's rendering pretty fast, so the hair should not be a problem within rendering. Um, I will show you one that is hard to render. So now it looks golden, but it is red. So just remember that what you see in your texture shaded is not always color correct. Um, you can go ahead and 
look at this in the eye ray window and that's it so we're gonna go to another hair now here's a little bit more of a complex hair am I ready for this hair Monica hair it looks like I'm gonna do this took me a little long so somebody asked me a question about this Monica hair if you notice there are these bright strands of hair that are really really small so the thing about this hair is that it has an alpha channel added to the layer of the hair to give it more transparent reality in your renders however it does take a long time to render a long time to render so much so that I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this I'm gonna show you how much render time it takes but I'm gonna fast forward Okay, so this is going by really fast for you. I would say that it took about 20 minutes just to render the little snippet here. I think it will show actually how many minutes, maybe not 20 minutes. To be totally honest, I don't know if honesty is the best policy, but I fell asleep. I've been really tired lately. <laughs> and I think it only took me about five minutes to fall asleep on this thing waiting for it to uh, render in that little square so you can see how the 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 light is hitting the um, the hair so that's beautiful in the render when you finally get there when you finally get to that render part but it is taxing your machine so that's why the other hairs have have that type of a, a feature hidden in the tessellation so that it doesn't uh, hinder your your machine but it does render well so that was about five minutes I think I took a two minute power nap and then I forgot I was recording um, it's beautiful but sometimes it doesn't look like it renders well in certain lighting in certain situations so there's a quick fix for that and um, we're gonna head on to that right now as soon as I wake up so that's two minutes for you but it must have been about five minute nap Rip Van Winkle nap. Okay, so what can we do? If you highlight your hair and you go into the surface panel, go into the surface panel and find cut out now I've learned from various message boards and various discords to take this value and put it down to maybe as low as 96 some say 99 some say 97 I like 96 and look at how sweet it renders faster you will lose some of the transparency and light if you're into that and you have time go ahead and wait for that render to finish but this is a way to still get a good look of the hair, but also, um, you know, not kill your, your, your memory on your machine and still, it looks nice. You still have that certain aspect of transparency with the cutout opacity lowered to 99, 98, 97, 96, I would stop. And, uh, and that's it because you're actually doing the whole hair not just the little strands. So make sure that you stop at a certain point or you won't get that nice transparent look on the hair. So that is that hair. But remember the beauty of those strands that are illuminated, bringing forth the light through the hair. Yes, forget about it. Okay. The next hair, I think let's do a new hair. 
and uh, I got a couple new hairs. Now, I'm going to load this Genesis 3 hair on the Genesis 8. I think that it's not going to work, but then it does work. So, sometimes Genesis 3 hair works on Genesis 8, but sometimes it doesn't. But I think because this is a short style, we can't really tell. So, I'm just going to go ahead and use the same hair, and I'm going to parent it to the Genesis 8. And figure that out later. I don't know why that worked, but maybe it's a new thing that they're doing. But I, I suspect that this type of hairstyle, it doesn't move too much. And I think um, the figures are not so, so far off. Even the hair cap matches. You know, this is how it looks. And remember the tessellation thing that we talked about. In your NVIDIA iRay preview, you won't see the hairstyle. But in your render, when you do your render um, section in your in your window... And then you'll be able to see that, yes, the hair is there. And no problem, right? Beautiful. Okay, so if you just need to see it in the um, IRA window for some reason, then I'll show you what you have to do. So right here, we can see that this also has a few parameters. But in IRA, you're not going to see it. So I'm going to show you that one more time. I'm going to go to our texture shaded and we're going to go ahead and just show some of the dials that go with this hair. Um, forget about the cutout. I want to go to parameters. Before I get to tessellation because I'm having trouble finding it at this point. <laughs> I'm going to go check out some of the morphs that go with this hair as far as shaping is concerned. Until I can remember where the tessellation is. Now underneath the cap, the hair cap, you have these sections. So you have the bun and you have the base. The base of the hair is the cap of the hair. And actually, no, the base of the hair is the hairstyle and the bun is in the back. So right now, I'm just going to move a few of these sliders and see what they do. Um, you can cover her ears with this style. You can make it a little bit loose. Uh, you can give it some other styling on the other side. And you have parameters to go in and out. And to, you can adjust it to what you want. So right now, in my parameters under general, if you go all the way down, tessellation is at the bottom. So you can, under general, just type in tessellation or test. And you see my tessellation is at zero. So I'm going to change it to three. Just for the hair, I'm selecting the hair base. And something happened. Let's see what it looks like in the NVIDIA iRay preview. Et voila. Now you can see the hair. If you really needed to see it. But just remember this fine grain of hair is taking up memory in your computer but if you really 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 need to see it that is where you change the tessellation I'm gonna change it to five but I see that right now the bun is separate so I'm gonna go ahead to the bun and just change that to five as well you don't need more than that and now I can see my full hairstyle. Isn't that pretty? But what I would do is take it back down. Once I can see what the hair is doing and that the hair is not going to change, I'll go ahead and take that hair all the way back down to zero. So there's another uh, thing about hair <clears throat> that I'd like to share, and that is sizing and fitting. Lots of times you get these hair, you think it's going to look great on every character that you create. But this is a new hair that I got on sale. Um, here's the thing. The hair is pretty much usually made for Genesis 8. 
it's not made for so many other characters or popular characters but some of these hairstylists or people that produce the hair they will create morphs to resize the base of the hair or the cap of the hair to match uh, the head of the model. So now this is Genesis 8. So sometimes characters can also wear this hair with a simple morph dial. And it looks so nice, right? There's no black lines. Now you guys all know about the black lines. So I'm going to go ahead and change my character head and we're going to see how this responds to a new character, maybe a not so popular character. And we're going to go ahead and uh, just change out her head. Finding an actor. Someone I don't usually use. <laughs> when you get so many morphs, sometimes things are hard to find. I know a lot of people that are customizing their DAS 3D experience. I'm going to start doing that because sometimes the content is just too much. And it all shows up in different places. So let's see. This is... I believe Mikasa. I can't, I don't know if I'm saying that right. But uh, yeah, so now you can see I changed her head only to be this different character. Now the hair cap is starting to, uh, her head is actually pushing through the hair cap, creating a dark line where it pushes through at. So you can see even in uh, the preview, it doesn't show as much. That's why sometimes by the time you get to render, always do your little render snippet on different areas because sometimes you miss it until you're actually rendering. And then sometimes you walk away from your render without realizing that you have this and then your render has it. And you've done so much work that you want to just go ahead and Photoshop it out or post it anyway. But let's see how we can fix that initially. Always take a peek at what IRA or what your render is going to look like with the little camera and the arrow at the top that I've been using this whole video. So you have these dials that are popular characters. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the hair and I'm going to dial it up. Now this character's Aiko. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Anyway, so I dial it all the way up to fit that character and voila it fits but now the test is what's going to look like in the render because I don't see those little lines anymore <laughs> and yes the render is looking good so this is a good morph dial to use for this character you have so many because when characters are created their head shapes change their forehead shapes change their cheek changes their ear placement changes there's so many different changes that happen with one character um, so you can go ahead and see how will you know these are some dead giveaways if you see these little gaps in the hair like these little uh, circular things and you can actually see her scalp through I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see her scalp through uh, some of these uh, through the cap I should say and you also see like these little round circular dots. That's a giveaway, even though you can't see it in your texture texture shaded preview. Uh, even though you can't see it, that's a giveaway that the scalp is not fitting. So just examine your model before you start rendering. In a hurry, don't be in a hurry to render, render, render. Um, but now we can go back and we can give her another head size. And yeah, that one fits too. So if you got these head adjustments if you want to go to another section this one is actually adjusting the head size and that is the story of hair thanks guys